Hello and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks and I'm happy to report that thanks to feedback from several of my viewers I've decided to continue into a part three my series of using a pivot table to create and present a frequency distribution report. The response from the viewers was to say, Danny, can you now take it to the next step and actually create a visual representation of the frequency distribution report? In other words, create a pivot chart. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do. So this began with a request from my manager, how many small invoices do we process? I created an initial pivot table frequency distribution report. The feedback I got from the manager was, I need to present this to upper management in one hour. In other words, can you clean up the, uh, the way this looks? Now, the second set of feedback that I have from the manager is, I'd like to see this presented visually in a chart. So here is the pivot table that we're going to use. Now, notice that in the pivot table, and I'm going to come up here, I'm using Excel 2010, I want to open up the field list. Notice over here that for this frequency distribution uh, report, I use one field in the underlying data set, but I used it three times. First, to create the bin distribution, the range of invoices, invoices that ranged in value from $1 to $5,000. I then pulled it over here into the values to summarize it by the revenue. So I changed the field name over here to call it revenue. I dragged the invoice total a second time into the values, and this time I used the count function to get a count of the number of invoices. Now, notice that there is a wide difference between the size in millions of dollars of the revenue that fits into each one of these bin ranges and the number or the count of the invoices. So, with one cell inside the pivot table selected in Excel 2010, and the same will apply in Excel 2007, on the pivot table tools options come over here and say pivot chart now i want to use a column chart so i'm going to leave that selected click ok now i have the chart embedded alongside the data and alongside the pivot table i like to focus on creating the chart and have that be the center of my attention so on the pivot chart tools design tab Notice over here to the far right, there's the command to move the chart. And in this case, I want to move it on to its own worksheet, which I'm going to call Frequency Chart. And click OK. All right, now here is the pivot table field list, which for right now I'm going to hide. Also notice that I have these funny looking uh, labels over here. Now, if I come over here onto the Pivot Chart Tools Analyze tab, these are called field buttons. For right now, while I'm creating the pivot chart, I'm going to say hide them. I want to concentrate on having the chart be the right representation of the data. Just before I do this, remember that when I come back here and I look at the pivot table, notice the big difference in values, millions of dollars and hundreds of invoices. So what we have over here on the chart is we have two series, revenue, which you can see in the column, and the invoice, which are these little, little, little red strips down here. So what I want to do is I want to create what's called a combination chart. Now. What I first want to do is make sure that I'm selecting that second series. I want to verify that I have that series selected. So if I come up here to Pivot Chart Tools on the Layout tab, over here I can see all of the possible areas of the chart to select. So if you don't have Invoice Count selected, this is the time to select it. Now that it's selected, now that it's active, come over to Pivot Charts Design, and I want to change the chart type to that. So rather than having both series be column charts, I want the count of invoices to be a line chart. And I'll take the default, click OK. So now you can see this red strip down here for the invoice count, but that's certainly not going to be effective in my presentation. So again, I want to make sure that it's selected. You can verify that from the design tabs of the pivot chart tools, uh, I'm sorry, by the layout tab and coming over here and making sure that from the drop down that you have the invoice count selected. 
Now that I know it's selected, I find the easiest way to approach this is to right mouse click and say format the data series for the series, which is the invoice count. In this case, what I want to do is I want to put this on a secondary axis. So the primary axis, which is what we see here for the blue column, is the revenue. What I see over here now is the secondary axis for the count of the invoices. So you see now I have a combination chart. The red line chart is using the secondary axis over here. The blue columns are using the primary axis over here for the revenue. So it's easier to see the relationship between the two series, between the two fields. All right, let's come back here and let's use at least one element from each of the four tabs that we have for pivot chart tools. Pivot chart tools for designing our chart, for laying it out, for formatting it and for analyzing it. So on the design chart, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select one of the pre-formatted backgrounds. This is a good start over here. All right, now let's move over here to the layout tab. One preference that I have for my legend is not to have them over here at the right. I prefer to have them placed down at the bottom of the chart. So I'll come over here for the legend, click down on the menu, and I want to show the legend at the bottom of the report. So the red line chart is the invoice count. The blue column is the revenue. Now let's put in a title. So let's come over here and we want to choose a chart title and its placement above the chart. And in this case, what we want to do is we are considering enforcing a minimum order policy. So in this case, what I'll put in here is revenue versus invoice count. I would probably give it a little bit more a thought and later on come back and change it, but for right now it's placed. One of my other preferences is that really I feel that these uh, value series grid lines confuse the issue. So I like a clean chart. So again, I'm on the pivot chart tools layout. And in this case, what I want to do for the grid lines on the primary series, primary horizontal series, is I want to say none. All right, now let's move on to formatting our chart. So now we're getting down to the local level. What I really want to do is I want to change the appearance of the column series, of the revenue series. So in this case, what I want to do is come over here into the shape styles, and I like to use one of the preset shape effects. I'm particularly fond of this one, preset number two. So you see the effect that it has. It has a really nice, uh, clean effect. All right, now it's time to return to the Analyze tab. Remember those field buttons that I removed about two minutes ago? Let's see what we have over here. So I can come back here and I can unhide all of them. Now, the, really the only one that I want to use is the pivot chart filter down here for the invoice total. If you recall, back on the pivot table itself, I used one field and one field only for this pivot table. I used the invoice total to create groupings for the bin ranges. So watch what happens when I use the invoice total filter over here to not look at all of the bin ranges, but I want to look at the low range and I want to look at the two high ranges. So you see I have a nice interactive chart. Now the filtering that I performed over here on the pivot chart also applies to the pivot table. So notice over here, here is the filtering that the chart applied to the pivot table. In this case, in the pivot table, if I want to remove that filter, click OK. When I return over here to the pivot chart, that filtering that I did, that I performed in the pivot table, applies to the pivot chart. So you see, you can't have a pivot chart without an underlying pivot table. Any changes that you make in one apply to the other, structurally as well as filtering. Now, let's get rid of uh, these values up here. And rather than coming back here to the Analyze and deciding, well, which ones do I want to get rid of? What I have found is that if you uh, right mouse click over here, notice that I have two choices hide the value field 
or hide all field buttons. So in this case, I'm going to say hide the value field. So I still have over here the report filter. Come down here, and I really don't need to have the legend field button down there. I, again, remove as many elements as you feel that you can. So here I have a nicely formatted interactive pivot chart that I can use to present my findings that I can use to interactively decide should we or should we not enforce a minimum order policy. And the pivot chart is nicely connected into the pivot table. So let me just close this up by reminding you that I have created a series of downloadable extended length tutorials on pivot tables in three flavors. A pivot table one hour plus uh, video for Excel 2003, one for 2007, one for 2010, for nine dollars and ninety five cents each and they are available as a download you download them from my webex by cisco site so when you come over to this website which i'll include a link for on this video come over here and you want to come into the recorded sessions and you'll see the sessions that i have available here are the three extended length pivot tables that i have recommended uh, or just to demonstrate it, as well as I have a number of free lessons over there. So I'll look for you in the next lesson. And thank you again for your support. Thank you for your comments.